Well, continuing with technology now, Google wants its battle with China taken to the World Trade Organization, but it's currently facing a different kind of battle at home. Apple has filed patent infringement complaints against Taiwan's HTC Corporation in an attempt to stop imports of phones that run Google's Android operating system. That's a move one observer called nuclear war. Joining us now is Rob Enderley, he's principal analyst for the Enderley Group, a longtime tech watcher. Rob, uh, you know, does, is this just ratcheting up the tensions between Apple and Google and, and the war between the two companies? Yeah, for the most part it is. Uh, Apple is, is fairly aggressive in terms of protecting their intellectual property. They were just recently sued by Nokia. Uh, and then countersued Nokia. So Apple is actually active right now and pretty aggressive with regard to this kind of litigation. And even though this doesn't directly affect Google, after all, the suit is against HTC, which uses the Google system. I mean, how is this going to affect Google if Apple does succeed? Are they going to have to uh, do some workarounds here and, and change the system? Well, it really depends on, on how much intellectual property um, Apple can, Apple attacks Google through. Uh, we're not through the trial yet and, and realize that there, there's an awful lot of litigation activity now going on between the different uh, platform form owners. I mentioned uh, Nokia and Apple earlier. So there's, th this is kind of a litigation mess at the moment. The problem right now is Google really doesn't have the kind of patent library that, say, somebody like Microsoft or Nokia has, being long-term tech companies, to protect against this kind of litigation and so Google is exposed. Uh, Rob, how difficult is it going to be for Apple to make this trade case? Well, that, yes, that, I mean, there's, there, there's certainly a high potential of prior work here, so the, so prior art, I guess is the right term, uh, here. So um, I think this is, this is a defensive move. Uh, they're really trying to, trying to keep Google from gaining share against their uh, near dominant uh, position in terms of profitability in the uh, smartphone space. And they see Google as an actual threat. It's, to, a lot, to a large extent, though, this is really turning out to be a rivalry between these two firms that's approaching a, a personal nature. Ever since Eric Schmidt was fired from Apple's board, the two firms have been looking across the pond at each other and not happy with what either one of them is doing. So was that term nuclear war, is, is, that, is that on target? Well, you know, to, to a certain extent, this kind of litigation, when it's typically put together between two large multinational companies, can be incredibly expensive and typically weighs on the intellectual property portfolios of both firms. And as I say, Google has is at a bit of a disadvantage because they don't really have that larger portfolio in this space, where, of course, Apple's been building their portfolio ever since they were founded in the 80s. What? So it, it, it is a lopsided fight at the moment. Well, and Rob, also, uh, Google's a little busy uh, fighting on other fronts, isn't it? I mean, this whole uh, idea of potentially taking its uh, disagreement with China to the WTO, is, is that, do you think, a distraction for Google, or is that a fight that it needs to be having right now? Well, it's, none of these fights are fights they should be having. I think it's, it shows a certain amount of experience, inexperience in their executive staff. It's, they're in very, in very many ways following the same uh, path that Microsoft followed in the, in the 90s and, and last decade a little bit as they learned how to play with governments. You would think Google could learn from Microsoft's mistakes without feeling they need to, need to repeat them. But yes, they're having problems with China, with the European Union right now, and with Italy. Uh, each different problems, but each, each problematic and each one a distraction. Yeah, Rob, is it safe to say that perhaps maybe some of these problems were of their own making? Well, most of them were. I mean, if you look at the problem they're having with the European Union, uh, as for an example, uh, they they were one of the folks that attacked Microsoft on antitrust, for forced Microsoft to step up and put together an antitrust team, and now that same team is being used to get the EU excited about Google and go after Google. Much like you were using the nuclear bomb bomb analogy earlier, uh, it, but, you know, if you if you launch one at somebody, you have to expect they're going to launch one back, and you better be prepared. And Google wasn't. Uh, Rob, just quickly want to ask you about a story that our Sheila Dharmarajan brought us this morning about Google acquiring a lot of small companies at which it already had relationships. Do you think that that's a good strategy? Just quickly here. Well, they've been acquiring an awful lot of firms, and it's a pattern that companies with lots of money and, and not a lot of experience in what to do with it do. They build a, a ton of complexity, and eventually that complexity uh, expands beyond their own span of control and can become problematic. What's happening is, is Google seeing ex-Googleites build companies. Those, those Googleites pitch it back in, and they buy the firms. All right, Rob, thanks for keeping it short. Rob Enderley of the Enderley Group.